I mentioned in the last video that we're going to use an EEPROM to convert binary numbers to decimal for a 7 segment display. Now an EEPROM is a form of data storage. The most important thing to know is that an EEPROM keeps its data after power is lost, so it isn't RAM. In fact, SSD slash flash memory is a type of EEPROM. The way we're going to use this is that we're going to have our 8-bit binary value come into the EEPROM as the address. Then we'll have the EEPROM output represent the values A to G that will direct our 7-segment display. Now the EEPROM I have is the Atmel AT28C16. Now the 16 at the end represents the number of bits. So 16 is 16K or 16,000. And the AT28C8 is the same chip, just 8,000 bits of memory. Now you might also find the letter E on the end of the chip and the E version is just faster. Those of you doing the math at home know that for 16K bits or 2K bytes, you need 11 address pins. So the left side is the address pins and the right is our 8 output pins. So the 8 bits to be translated will go into 8 of the 11 address pins. Now that leaves 3. One of those I want to dedicate to a signed or unsigned number. Now remember that a signed bit is one where the 8th bit designates whether the number is positive or negative. So it goes from negative 127 to positive 128. An unsigned bit goes from 0 to 255. Now on the outputs we have A through G. Then our last bit will be the negative sign if there is one. So this fills out the pins pretty nicely. Because of this you technically only need 9 address pins or 4k bits. Now Atmel starts at 8k but I know that 4k EEPROMs do exist. Now let's take a look at the data sheet. So we have the same name of the chip and the 2k by 8 here to verify. Down here at pin configurations we see that we have 11 addresses A0 to A10. Then we have chip enable and write enable like we are acquainted with already. However we have this thing called output enable and we haven't seen this before. And now that's because if we take a look at the pinout, we can see that this chip doesn't actually have dedicated inputs and outputs, rather it has IO pins. Now by changing the output enable, we change whether these pins take in data or output data. The thinking is that these chips won't really be used dynamically, so you program it all at one time and read from it all at one time after that. Now taking a look at the AC write characteristics, we can see that the write pulse width needs to be in between 100 and 1000 nanoseconds. Now this is the pulse width to say that we want to write a value to the EEPROM. Now that's not a lot of time and our typical push button switch won't work for this. Now we could use an RC circuit to program it, but I'm not going to do that because programming 4000 bits by hand is a complete waste of time. We'll go over how to program it in the next video. Right now what I want to do is hook up the addresses to some dip switches and the outputs to some LEDs. So we'll put the chip down and our LED strip down. Then we'll get our dip switches. I only have 8 bit dip switches so since we need 11 bits I'll just use two of them. And two won't fit so we'll shift the Atmel chip over a bit and alright that looks good. So these are all the components we need and we can start hooking everything up. For starters, let's put power and ground, so we'll start at address 0 which is in the middle of the chip and work our way up to address 7 which is the first pin. Now it's a little bit tight but I think everything is okay. Now our last three addresses are on the other side of the chip, so there's address 8, 9, and 10. So now we have all 11 addresses hooked up to our dip switches. So we're using the last three switches on the first module and all 8 of the second. Now I hooked up all the LEDs off camera but it's pretty straightforward. I skipped the middle two LEDs as usual and did four on the left, two off in the middle and four on the right. Lastly we need the right output and chip enable. Now the output enable needs to be changeable so we'll use a jumper. The right enable too, although we won't deal with it right now, we'll use a jumper. The chip enable we can tie low though because there won't be a time when we won't need it enabled. So now we can plug in power for everything. And by default, everything is set high for this chip and we're getting that for all of our addresses, so that's a good sign. Of course, we'll have to have settable data to truly test, but we'll check on that in the next video. Now these LED values will go into another module we have to talk about that will actually output the value onto several segment displays. But for now, I think this is good enough progress for today. So please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Mohudin, and I will catch you guys later.